Morning, people. Welcome back to the Just Your Football Show. Um, and I'm giving the fans, the fans, what they want. Um, they, they asked for this to be a, a regular thing. And um, yeah, I reached out to the main man that is Conor McGilligan from One Leet and the Blue, White and Yellow podcast. Uh, if he would give up his precious time and come back and spend some time with me and look ahead to Burnley. How are you doing, brother? All right, mate. Not too bad. Not too bad. Shame we didn't get to meet for a pint the other day, but, you know, we'll do it again, won't we? Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't drink, bro, but yeah, I see what you say. Quite a joke. <laughs> left with LUFC Lewis for the old bloody two hours. That was painful enough, mate, you know. <laughs> Sorry, Lewis. No, man. Love you, really. he, will, he will be, man. He will be. <laughs> um, <yeah. laughs> I, I think he will, anyway. Um, no, it was great to see you as well. I've seen you, obviously, just briefly at Everton as well. Um but in the rain, it was oh, it was terrible that weather, weren't it? Yeah, grim. Mate. It crew, it was just like everyone was just round the Bremner statue outside the Peacock. Every it was a proper like. I felt like that was the first match day because yeah. everyone was just minging on it. Like when we were trying yeah, to talk yeah. outside, it was just torrential rain. I know it was no brutal. Chance. Talk to me about crew then, because like I was saying, I said the other day. Obviously, I fell into that trap, Connor, of of having Premier League. Um, Look, if I'm honest, right, I remember going to Blackburn when we were due to play them on the Saturday in the in the league and we had them at home in the cup. And I remember going and there was about seven and a half thou, right, genuinely. And then I looked at this crew game and I'm like, yo, Premier League, now it's only crew, don't need to bother with that. And then I'll never make that decision again because I didn't even get to watch the game, bro, because Carabao or EFL... It's not on anywhere in the world, man. I couldn't, I couldn't get it. So you were one of the lucky ones that was there in a packed out stadium. How was it under the lights, mate? Was it, was it good? Yeah, some atmosphere again. And I think that someone, took, I don't know if it was uh, LFC data, didn't they? he? Said that apparently that's the highest attendance for a second round cup game there's ever been, or something like that. Mm. Th- just like the Everton game, mate. That you could tell a lot of the crew players had one lad in the middle called Ben Knight who kept falling around, and they were just sort of starstruck by it they just yeah. did, clearly didn't expect it and it was it was bouncing just like the yeah. cop was amazing i mean i was in the i was in the west stand the cop was amazing the south stand the crew fans were brilliant as well to be fair but another great atmosphere but i think now i mean you're one of the lucky ones with the season ticket mate if i can just get to as many games as i can yeah. i don't care if the league cup uh, just as long yeah. as i get to watch leads i don't i don't care at this moment in time yeah. like i think i got my ticket for 13 quid when there was it was seven thousand sold out, but I thought, pfft, so what? Like, but it just shows, yeah. mate, the project now with Leeds and it, like, from where we were, like, pfft, yeah, it's mad. That's what I mean. Pre- Premier League snobbery, I've got. I'm like, yo, we've got Liverpool <laughs> in a few weeks. Yeah, you've I got don't need to worry about crew. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Um, yeah. But no, I won't. I will not do that again, genuinely, because I was sat at home like, well, I can't, FOMO. I can't, I can't watch my football team like what's going on do you know what I mean it was mad it was mad yeah. um, great result though I watched your post match Harrison unbelievable it was class wasn't he he was mate he was uh, very very good uh, I, I don't know what it is with him like you know as much as anything he frustrates the life out of me but I, I don't know what I, what I want from Harrison because he's never going to be the perfect footballer if he was able to deliver every single ball on a sixpence he'd be I mean he's worth a lot of money anyway but he'd be worth yeah. 200 million he'd be what he'd, 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 be, he'd be the best winger in the Premier League yeah. so I think I think with what he does mate he does all the basics so well he's dribbling his first touch his shot and I, I said it on my post match he took the mantle off Rafinha he was the X factor. He wanted the ball. He was making mm. things happen. And yeah, him and Yorente, mate. Pff, I mean, Yorente was a joke again. Um, I know it's only against Crew, but just just the basics he does from defence. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Harrison, by and large, mate, man of the match. He was brilliant. Yeah, yeah. I watched your post match, and I could see you in the ground, like for the lighting and that. And I'm thinking, he's looking round, thinking, oh, we'll see you. <laughs> yeah, I've got to do it. I think I, got I, a minute, I think I got a minute in, and I was out. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was I and, I got, and I got booted out by the stewards. I thought to myself, I turned yeah. around to him. I said, I said to him before I went, I'm going to do a little recording. He went, all right, no problem. I went, just five minutes. And uh, a minute and a half went by and he came. He just came by the side of me and went, mate, you're going to have to go now. And I went, come on, yeah. mate, five minutes. And they just, they turf you out proper quickly now. <laughs> I could see them loitering. I'm thinking, yeah. Connor's waited till everyone's, I know what you got. I know it, bro. I know it. I remember doing it at, uh, for Sky at Borough Away when we used to do the Sky stuff. Do you remember? Yeah, yeah. And, um, 
I did exactly the same because you're like, oh, people are there. And then I seen you walking out and I could see you like, I was seeing these people walking past me. I could feel this, your pain. Mate, there was, this, there was this cute little kid as well, like behind me for about seven rows. I didn't even realise when I was doing it. You might be able to just hear it faintly on the video, but he's going, you are a YouTuber. You are a YouTuber. <laughs> I'm just like, I'm trying to concentrate. I've got stewards there. I'm worried about the light and this kid shouting YouTuber at me. It's like, oh, God. Awful. Brilliant. Well, I, I watched Oscars as well on all these TV, and there's a lot to be said about lighting because he was sat in the pitch black in his dad's car. <laughs> again, <right>? again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. I had to soak it all up because, as I say, I couldn't um, watch the game. Um, but one thing we will, you, you mentioned Jack Harrison. For me, he could be the next on the conveyor belt of England stars. And we found out today, which was totally out of the blue for me, wasn't expecting it at all. Bamford getting his England call up, mate. That's huge, especially for someone who said uh, we'll never get the Premier League with Bamford as a striker. Yeah, yeah. One thing you all need to know: don't listen to anything I say. <laughs> oh, I'm near seventeen thousand subs. I'll never know. Uh, but no, mate. It's uh, yeah, it's, it's great and it great news. And the amount from from where he was and and how he's built as a player. I mean, we mentioned it last time, mate. But just the level he's got. To, I mean, he came on at Crew, mate, and. Yeah. I was a little bit worried. I'm not going to lie. It got to about sort of 70 minutes and I was thinking, we're not going to break him down here. This is going to go mm -hmm. to penalties. This is going to be Hull all over again. Um, but he came on and just, I know it's crew. I know it's crew. Yeah, yeah. But he just changed the entire landscape of the game. He gave us a focal point. He was giving the centre-backs an absolute nightmare. He was running them all over the place. Nice little deft touches here and there, getting shots on goal. And suddenly the, the, the entire back line were panicking about Patrick Bamford. Mm -hmm. And I feel like, such there's been such an evolution in his game, and I mentioned it last week, mate. He's not a championship striker, he was never a championship striker. I think he struggled there big time, yeah. But I think he's made for the Premier League, I think he's made for it, and I think he's showing it. And to get an England call up, and look at his age, Joe, you know, yeah, look know. at his age, and he's getting an England call up above like Greenwood, <laughs> Greenwood not getting in, and Bamford. yeah, man, mad. really surprised, you know. I'm not gonna yeah. lie, I think. When I heard the news, I was like, wow, I jumped straight on a live because I was pumped for it because it was, it was class. And for, for him to, to, to get that, um, you know, and we look at some of, I mean, Harry Kane for me, he's amazing. Obviously, he's elite. Maybe he won't start because he hasn't had many games. You've got DCL. There's a chat. I mean, it's his to lose now, isn't it, Connor? Really, mm -hmm. obviously, Watkins is injured. If he goes and had a good performance, then. Why can't he, you know, stay in the England setup? And then we get Jack Harrison in, we get Luke Kalen in, and before you know it, <laughs> it's just yeah. shame for Luke because we have so many good right backs, to be fair. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, no, I agree with you, mate. I think it's, you're right. It's, it's a really good point, actually. If he can fashion two really good performances and he's got the players around him, let's be right. Yeah. I mean, the players around him that can put it on a plate, it's, uh, let's, be, let's be real and totally honest here, it's on a different level to what it is at. At Leeds, and I think you got that with Calvin when he was there. He was sort of a bit awestruck when he was there, wasn't he? And, and you know, all the facilities and that, this, that, and the other. And Bamford will have that, but I just can't wait to see him on like you know, the media days when they have like the YouTube channel and stuff like that. And maybe he sat there next to I don't know, like Sterling or, or Grealish, and they're having a bit of banter. And it's nice because it's not only have we seen Pat grow as a footballer, but you know, you've seen him grow as a person. He's always in the media now talking about Bielsa, yeah. talking about Leeds, talking about what Leeds has done for him. And it's just nice because, in a way, like Dallas, he's part of that cohort, isn't he? Where he's like, they're one of our own now. We've adopted them, Ooh, like Ailing, yeah. Dallas, obviously KP, Bamford, because they've been with us for so long now. And it's, it, yeah, it's just amazing to see him. And yeah, imagine if you got on. It, it's because what it is, Joe, and we felt this, didn't we, before? It's like Leeds going away with England. It is, isn't it? Yeah. You, 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 yeah. You're more, bo you're bothered more about, like now, yeah. I, I hate the international breaks because I'm all, I'm, I'm, I'm Leeds. But, but, but now you're now happy, happy for it, isn't it? Because you, yeah. you're excited to see him. Yeah, 100%. I said that exactly the same. Only thing I don't want, I want peak Bamford. I don't want cut back from Sterling or Grealish and him to miss a fluffy's lines and everyone going, what is he in? Because <laughs> yeah. it can happen, bro. We know. Yeah. Uh, the, thing know. Is with, the thing is with KP as well, I think we, this isn't by by and large saying Bamford's you know not consistent or whatever, but the time period he's been at Leeds has been good spells and bad spells. Whereas with yeah. KP, we all know that consistently he's just under Bielsa yeah. has been immense. So mm -hmm. yeah, we're hoping we just need. I mean, he got a. I didn't even he didn't even the other day. Did he, he needs to get off the mark really, and then yeah. <laughs> if he gets off the mark against well, Burn, they'll be confident for him to get maybe one one for England. I don't know. Yeah, well, well what better time to do it, mate? You've got yourself a five year deal. 
You've got an England call up. Surely he scores at the weekend. Yeah, some week for him, hasn't it? Bloody hell. That's um, some big bottle, that's some. I know, mate. Yeah, big bottle for a big man. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so it'd be some week, wouldn't it? It really would, but um, it'll be a tough game at the weekend, I think, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, both of us need to to win the game. I mean, it, it's mm. key. We we it. I mean, if you were to look at it, Connor, going to the international break, four points on the board, you're happy, aren't you? Whereas Burnley, they'd have zero wins. Do you know what I mean? So it, it's a huge game for both sides. This. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I was speaking to a, a journalist earlier on from the Burnley side, Burnley writer, and uh, he was saying that it's just an absolutely huge game for them as well. Mm-hmm. But I, I almost think, I don't know about you, but, you know, when you used to go to Turf Moor and everyone was like, oh, it's a horrible place, Turf Moor mm-hmm. to go. I, I, don't, I don't know if that's a thing anymore. Like, I don't feel, I feel over the past, like, three or four years, that's weakened a lot, that that sort mm-hmm. of thing. And I think at this moment in time, with the lack of transfers they've had, I think they brought Wayne Hennessy in for Bailey Peacock. Is Maxwell Corny or not? Confirmed. Not yet. That not not, not yet. They brought no. Lennon in, Aaron Lennon. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, I, I, I think they've got a lot going on there. I don't think Dyche is happy with everything that's going on in the yeah. background. They're supposed to have an American takeover, aren't they? Which is, which is apparently not happening. Like, like, like what's yeah. going on in Newcastle as well. So, I think there's a lot of circumstances, and you do wonder with Burnley, like, is this, you know, is this going to be? the year I don't know is this going to be the year where because you you know you go into a new season with that same squad and how often yeah. can you just say like oh it's four four two dash football flick ons they had one to eleven the other day as well didn't they <laughs> one yeah. to eleven like yeah. everyone in their right spots <laughs> yeah I've said that mate they'll probably they'll probably now beat us two nil I've said yeah. that but that's what I mean I did a little bit of a, the Patrick Bamford thing as well and put out a little clip of it and I was like having a go at Dyche always complaining about no you know because he went and he had a go at him for his mum and dad turning up to Burnley with him. And then I was like, he's always moaning about Tarkovsky and McNeil not being in. Well, Bamford's in and could come back to buy me because <laughs> Tarkovsky might score ahead and McNeil, <laughs> McNeil might get a goal. You never know. Yeah, um, yeah. But look, the thing is, I spoke to a Burnley fan the other day and you forget this, but they actually lost their first six games last season. And then that's, that's still, then, yeah, yeah. You don't, you don't realise it. And because I'm thinking, wow, if they lose three, like you said, straight away, you're thinking they're for the drop, but they lost their first six games last season. Dyke's just, I don't know what it is. Do you think Dyke should be at a bigger club, mate? Do you think he should be given an opportunity elsewhere? Some job, aren't it? Yeah, like, you know, we, mm. we look at Burnley now and we turn around and go, ah, oh, Burnley 4 4 2. Probably like I've just done in a sense of it's got, it's got, I think it's got an expiry date at some point, mm. but, uh, I sort of look at him and I think, yeah, what a job he's done to bring Burnley from where they were. You know, he's never really had any money. And he was he sort of dug us out last year, didn't he? He was like, Lude spent over 100 million last year and all that sort of rubbish. Um, we spent nothing, you know what I mean? But um, yeah, I think I think he's done a fantastic job. A bigger club. I mean, I, I always thought like there'd be a move to Everton or something like that, mm. you know, because Everton's recruitment policy over the past 10 years has been shocking. Um, and that's no disrespect to Daesh, but I thought he might be a sort of like stopgap for him, you know. Um, but yeah, I think he should. I think he. But then again, how far does his philosophy in football go? Like, would it be? It? It's accepted. It's accepted at Everton, in it. But let's yeah. say if you went to a Tottenham or Everton, mm. I don't think the fans would accept that, would they? No. At all? No, definitely not. And what con- what concerns you most about them then tactically? Is it just the the hoop ball, the balls into the box, how physical they'll be, mate? Yeah, I mean, we dealt with it really well at Ellen Road, didn't mm-hmm. we? I actually liked that performance, believe it or not. It was horrendous to watch. But, I mean, we got battered, didn't we? We got absolutely yeah. battered. And we got away with it as well, didn't we? I don't know if it was a penalty. Bamford obviously took it away. And then yeah. I think they hooked one into the net and it got blown well, up because it was a foul. Was far, yeah. And then and then I think as well, didn't it? Was it Melier who just smashed Ben Mee in the face? Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, that was been... the one where it went in the goal. It went in the, oh, okay, it went in yeah, the back yeah. of the net, yeah. But I think and he, he smashed him, didn't he? He yeah. smashed him in the face. And uh, yeah, Daesh was obviously aggrieved after that. But they're, mate, they're a high-pressing team and Leeds can sometimes struggle a little bit passing through the high press. So I'm going to be really interested in this one to see whether or not Leeds go a little bit longer. You know, if we start going long and, and, and trying to hit Bamford straight off the bat, I mean, I think we did that a lot in the last game. Um, but Ellen Road, uh, Ellen Road, mate, they, they showed what they're all about. It's not going to be easy, this, at all. No. I think when we played them last time, I was saying this today, I don't know if you remember, but when we played them last time at Turf Moor, a week before they just solidified their Premier League status, they just stayed mm. up. 
And I think they're on a little bit of a come down from that. So yeah, and obviously Leeds got one were brilliant, were clinical, but I think this one's gonna be a it's gonna be a tough game. But yeah, the weaknesses I think um it's gonna be physical, but we've stood up to it before, Joe. We've not conceded yeah, to it have. yet in the Premier League, mate. We've not but I do worry. I, I, I don't think he's going to start Llorente, which I think, you know, I don't know. After even after the other night, mate, just the impact he has on that defense is unbelievable. Um, so if he was there, I'd be a lot more confident, to be honest. Let's just move it on then. I've got. I'll, I'll switch back in a in a second. But look, I was a. Having looked back and on reflection, maybe I was too. Um, vitriolic towards Cooper in defence of him after the Everton game because I've seen him getting a load of abuse and I was like, yeah, but let's not forget he got an assist. However, do you think there is a phasing out coming? I think there's a lot to be said about Saturday if indeed Marcelo Bielsa goes with Laurenti and Straug. Do you think it's time for Cooper to be phased out in your opinion? Yeah, but I'm, I'm like you, Joe. I, I mean... He's the scapegoat, isn't he? He is the scapegoat. Yeah, yeah, uh, I mean, I, I I look at him and I think, what other mistakes did he make last season? Like, massive yeah. mistakes. I, I never saw him drop any clangers. You know, a lot no. of people in the first couple of games, you know, we forget the 4-1 loss to Leicester at Ellen Road. Robin made quite a few mistakes in that game. And I look at, uh, and, and, and if Cooper had made those mistakes, he'd got absolutely hammered. A lot of people will say, yeah. well, Robin was new to the side and Cooper's experienced and he should know better and all that. And I understand that, but... I think the, the the finger is always pointed at Cooper if there's ever a mistake. And he got it wrong, didn't he, against Everton? He completely got it wrong. I mean, he judo throwed Calvert Lewin, didn't he? Yeah, but true. like, but like you say, mate, you got an assist, and um, you know, I just think he plays such an important part of the uh, in the in the dressing room, and you know, all this sort of stuff. But he's he's the captain, so we need him in and around there. And I think a lot of people they always think the grass is greener, don't they? Alioski moves on. Ah, the grass is always greener. You know, Pablo Hernandez moves on. I oh, will get another centre attacking midfielder who replicates Pablo Hernandez. The grass isn't always greener, and mm-hmm. and having someone like Cooper, his experience is vital in that side. And we can't just keep getting rid of of, of players like that just because we think we're over the hill because they offer something else as well to the dressing yeah. room. There's a lot to be said about that, mate. Because even against Everton, Tyler Roberts came on, and listen, I'm not Tyler Roberts' biggest fan. I think his first touch, his first turn, his first dribble, everything at the start is brilliant, and then it's crap. That's just my opinion. He'll do a nice turn, he'll take a few on, and then his final ball, rubbish. Passes it to an Everton body. I don't know, he'll take it down, great first touch, turn, oh, pass, down. What are you doing? Do you know what I mean? It is so frustrating. But straight away, as soon as he came on, he's not given that chance because all I could hear around me was, oh, Tyler! Do you know what I mean? Before he's even got the ball, and I'm like, it just shows... Be- there's so much to be said about certain players. And I get it, because I'm like that with Costa, but sometimes we need to just take a step back. But like you said, Cooper, one mistake, game over, he's rubbish, he's finished, he's this, he's that. Tyler, it's this similar sort of thing, and I heard it in the ground as soon as he came on. Like, it. And if that's Calvin, nothing's getting said. But because it's Tyler, it's like, oh, Tyler. Or Dallas, but Dallas. Anyway. Or Dallas. That's yeah, yeah, never exactly. get anything. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it is interesting to see how he goes at the weekend. If he went for, with Laurenti and strike it, it could be the end for, for Coops, which would be sad, but maybe it is time to, to turn that corner. Mm. Who are you worried about from a, a Burnley perspective, mate? Dwight McNeil's obviously a great player. I rate Josh Brownell, you know, he, he'll, he'll be busy. Chris Wood, of course. And is Charlie Taylor still n- number one left back for them? He is, yeah, and I thought he had a, I thought he had a good game against Rafa as well. But uh, you know, I mean, the four nil, the four. I always try to look at individual battles. You know, and when you've got a full back against the winger, how many times has that winger beaten the full back? And I think ultimately Charlie did a really good job on Rafinha, mm-hmm. of um, especially in the second the second game we played them. But yeah, mate, Brownhill, one hundred percent. He was just tenacious in 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 the first game, and Leeds have got to be. He's just someone who I'd love in this lead side. I know we've been yeah. rumoured, but just someone tough, good on the ball, good off the ball, a lot of energy. As I said, aggressive as well. I like that. Um, but yeah, altogether, mate, I think Brownhill's going to be going to be a worry. I think I quite like the battle of Ailing against McNeil, so I'm not too worried yeah. about that. And McNeil only ever performs against Trent Alexander-Arnold, so we're all right there. Um, but yeah, mate, I think it's the balls into the box, and it? it's the yeah. it's the corners, it's Tarkowski, me. 
wood barns yeah. it's it's yeah. it's the whole it's all of them isn't it and mm. i mean they're all about they're all about above six two aren't they apart from vidra i think they're all just massive, massive. and goodmanson yeah so the aerial yeah. threat mate probably yeah, it's an interesting one on Vidra as well. I was listening to a Burnley preview the other day and they were saying how they felt he would get more game time and it turns out he's now fourth-choice striker again under Deitch, which he had a run in towards the back end of last season, didn't he? Um, but interesting you mentioned midfield there. Obviously, Radrazani responded to a tweet earlier on saying Forshaw's the new CM. How do you feel about that, mate? It could be big for us if he gets back to full fitness. I know you'd rather see a body come in. I'm like you, I would. Um, but what are your thoughts on for sure? Seeing him in the flesh 60 minutes against crew? Yeah, uh, on that, yeah. I uh, uh, thought he was very good, mate. Very busy, mm. good good on the ball. I was doing a bit of a player cam. I can't believe how much you look like him. Um, but I, I'm, I'm watching him and I'm thinking to myself, he's moving freely. He's get he's good on the ball. I liked him and Calvin as well. Him and Calvin Ooh. together, very, like lovely combo. And you forget, mate, when Bielsa first came in, he said he's the best player at the club. So he said he could play at a Champions League club, bro. Yeah, I mean, he said, I didn't he say like some like clicks, like one of what did he say to yeah, play at like? Yeah. In, and in, then uh, click went. Click, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> click. Yeah, click. He's on the now, cup though. Click. Click's looking naughty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah. is, mate. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. But yeah, for sure, really good, mate. I was that was the most pleasing thing. I actually went down to Crew. Just because I thought he was going to rotate the whole team, but I just wanted to see Forshaw and what he was all mm. about. I essentially paid 15 quid to go watch Forshaw. Um, so yeah, he was really good, mate. On the Radvazani tweet, just why that's clear. We're not getting a midfielder, are we though? Now, no, With that, no, 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 no chance, no chance. Um, I just don't understand why he needs to tweet that out. It's like yeah, yeah. It's like, I think Baron said it earlier, it's like you've got a red flag to the Bulls, haven't you? You know, you're like, yeah, yeah, of there like that on Twitter. It's like, yeah. you're just going to get absolutely... Don't do that, bro. If he breaks down, mate, can you imagine? That people have a bookmark that tweet. <laughs> yeah, you, if he breaks down. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't see Forshaw playing in the first eleven until the start of the new year. You know, if he gets mm. a break, I, 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 I think it's going to be a really slow, slow process where they bed him in. They're not just going to throw him back in in four or five weeks' yeah. time, I don't think. No, I, I heard, I think it was an all stats, aren't we? And I think, it, I don't know if it's a direct Bielsa quote, but Bielsa's on record apparently saying he'd have to play two games in a week before we look to put mm -hmm. him in the first team. Now, the under-23s play Friday, which is today when this goes out. So if he's in there and he gets another 60 or 45 minutes, then you, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, so it'd be interesting to see how that goes. Um just to just to finish up, mate, how do you think we get a result in the game? What needs to go well? Who needs to play well? Uh, defend resolutely and hit him on the counter like we did in the last game and have individual moments. You know, get Rafa running and, and, and potentially score an absolute worldie. Jack Harrison, I think, needs to have a big performance. I yeah. think we murdered him out wide last time, didn't yeah. we? And I think Harry, it was one of Harrison's best performances of the season, I thought. And Rafa was very good, obviously, um, you know, cutting inside a lot and this, that and the other. So, um, yeah, out wide, We need mate. a big performance from Rodrigo as well, because I think he's going to start, because Bielsa said yeah. against Everton, if he'd have been fit, he'd have started. So the uh, fact that he started against Crew, I think he'll he throw him straight in against Burnley. I mean, it was, rubbish, another, was it? It, it was another, it was another against crew. Yeah, he, he wasn't rubbish, mate, but he, he was, he wasn't on it really. I didn't think, mm. I didn't think him or Roberts were really on it. And he was given a, a, a real good go of it, really. You know, mm. Bielsa put him there and, and he gave him a really good fist of it. But um, yeah, I think, I think he does need to have a very good game, but it's just the defensive work needs to be disciplined as well. And I think Burnley will be targeting that. But you forget in, in the last game, he came off the bench, two sublime finishes up front. And I'd like to see that again. I'd like to see, you know, click in there and then, you know, Rodrigo coming off the bench again. But I, 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 to be honest, Joe, it was a year ago. I think uh, Graham Smythe put it out. Graham Smith, sorry, put it out uh, yesterday. A year ago, 27 million, we signed Rodrigo. I love Rodrigo as a player. I'm really happy we've got him. I think his talent is world class. Yeah, I, yeah, just, I just still haven't figured out him in this lead side yet. I don't I don't understand it. I don't get the jigsaw. So yeah. Yeah. No, no, I get it, mate. I get it. And he's a bit of an enigma, isn't he? But we all willing him and wanting him to come come yeah. good. I think that's what we want. Yeah. Um so score prediction mate. Do we go into the international break four points on the board? Yeah, yeah, and I think I'll be happy with that. I'll be happy with that. Yeah, really same. happy with that. I think a good performance. I think we'll concede. Um I think we're gonna concede Early, I think it's going to be they're going to go one up with a stupid set piece. Um, and then I think we're going to score 
And I'll say it. I think we'll score three. I think we'll beat them 3-1. What about That's you? That's nice. I'm, I'm going to go 2-0, mate. I'm going to go 2-0. Tried and tested. Um, we need a we need a win on the board because uh, then obviously when we return we've got Liverpool, haven't we? So um, <laughs> yeah. that, I can't wait for that. Want to bed in though, yeah, want exactly. To bed. I can't yeah. wait for it. And selfishly, yeah. I'm sort of happy that that Rafinha's not going away on Brazil duty. Sorry, Rafinha, but yeah. are you going to are you having El, are you having Ellen Road duty then? Are you going down to the Liverpool game? Yeah, because it's not great. Oh, yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't bother with them League One teams, man. It's got to be, it's got to be Salah and Mane, not some postman. Do you know what I mean? You won't be saying that when the game's finished. I know, yeah, yeah. No, I would never make that decision again. But Connor, yeah. thank you as always, mate. You're an absolute legend. It's great to have you back on. Links yeah, to the Blue, White and Yellow podcast in the link. Of course, one leads as well, which I know you're all watching. Uh, yeah. Thank you, mate. No, I really appreciate it, mate. Uh, keep churning out the content. I'm an avid watcher, as you know, uh, so keep doing your thing. But if any of you want to head over and uh, see some B-Tech Joe Wayne Mint content, uh, up, come, come over and uh, see one Leeds. We'll have to get you on soon. I'm just, I'm that, I mean, I'm that busy. I'm that busy. I, I just, I, 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 I completely, honestly, mate, just, I'm um, not left my desk here. He, so, he's, uh, he's, he's the Lukaku. And I'm the Antonio, I'll take that. All You're right. the Daryl Dike. <laughs> yeah, I called him Daryl Dyke, bro. <laughs> Someone said to me, I was doing a thing earlier, and I went, oh, yeah, we're linked to a player, Daryl Dyke. And he went, yeah, so about DK. And I went, oh, shit. Daryl Dyke. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, I, I guess I, I guess that I'm you know that Leo Kelder. I'm hoping yeah. it's Kelder because I've been saying Kelder now for a month and I think I'm May wrong. I call, I've been calling him Hegeldi. <laughs> Forget the silent J, Hegeldi. <laughs> oh, I love no. it because people in the comments will say to me, You pronounce it like this, I look it and I'll go, Yeah, nah. <laughs> Hegeldi Midget Land. Midget Land. <laughs> Kajusta from Midgetland. Suggested Everyone were going, Midgetland? <laughs> How do you say it though, bro? You do it. Go on. What? The the Mi FC Midgetland. Uh... How do you say it? You're going to say it now, aren't you? Midgetland. Yeah, I can't get that way. I can't <laughs> know for a new uh, What is it? What is it? Uh, yeah, I can't not get that out of my yeah, head. No, no. You've, completely you've completely confused me. Uh, I can say to use though, can use the, the, yeah, the play yeah, yeah, that's all Midget right. I can do that one, yeah. Thank you as always, guys. What a legend! And uh, yeah, check out one leads, and hopefully, you'll see me over there pretty soon because I need some of these subs. Peace out now. <laughs> bye bye.